Tomo News presents Medical Breakthroughs. Breakthrough Nanochip heals injuries with just one touch. Researchers at Ohio State University have developed a new technology that allows the body to generate any type of cell to help heal injuries. Tissue nanotransfection involves placing a fingernail-sized nanochip on a patient's skin, adding a droplet of genetic material, and zapping it with an electrical current. The DNA is delivered through channels created by the current, and it reprograms skin cells to turn into specific cell types that can then be used in other parts of the body. When tested on a mouse with a damaged leg, researchers found vascular cells converted from skin cells formed new blood vessels that allowed the leg to heal in two weeks. The non-invasive technology was also able to generate nerve cells in the legs of brain-damaged mice. Once the cells were harvested, they were injected into the brain to help with stroke recovery. The nanochip also tested effectively in pigs and is expected to be approved for human trials within a year. Man's paralyzed limb reanimated with the help of a brain chip. A team from Ohio has made a medical breakthrough, successfully developing technology that allows brain signals to bypass a spinal injury and transmit straight to the muscles. When Ian Burkhart broke his neck four years ago, it damaged his spinal cord and left him paralyzed from the chest down. He retained some movement in his shoulders and biceps, but lost sensation in his hands and legs. To help him, doctors inserted a chip the size of an eraser head into his motor cortex, the area of the brain that controls hand movements. The chip records brain signals for specific hand movements and sends these to a computer via a port on the back of Burkhardt's head. Once the signals are decoded, they're transmitted to an arm sleeve studded with electrodes. The electrodes stimulate the muscles and allow them to move. The system, called NeuroLife, has allowed Burkhardt to make six different hand and wrist motions. It marks the first time a paralyzed man has been able to regain movement using recorded brain signals. Metastatic cancer could be stopped. A research team led by the Georgia Institute of Technology has developed a new treatment that can potentially stop cancer cells from migrating inside the human body. Cells contain cytoskeletons to give them their shape and to carry out functions such as division and movement. In order to move, the cytoskeletons produce protrusions called phyllopodia, which extends from fibers inside the cell known as lamellopodia. The protrusions help cells to shift locations. Lamellopodia and phyllopodia are overproduced in malignant cancer cells, enabling them to spread around the body at faster speeds. Cancer kills patients often through the spread of malignant cells, which is known as the metastasis process. By attaching nanorods comprised of a small collection of gold atoms to the integrin of the cells, the cytoskeleton can be stopped from overproducing lamellopodia and phyllopodia, which slows down the migration of malignant cells. A low-energy laser of near-infrared light is then used on the cells. The light is absorbed by the gold nanorods, which then partially melts cancer cells and damages lamellopodia and phyllopodia. This can bring the migration of the cancer cells to a stop. If desired, the laser light can also be adjusted to kill the cancer cells. The experimental treatment shows no observable damage to healthy cells, which is an advantage over commonly used chemotherapy. In the experiments, scientists also did not see the treated cancer recur. Israeli scientists show how melanoma spreads in the body. Scientists at Tel Aviv University have made a landmark discovery on melanoma, a brutally aggressive form of skin cancer that kills a person every 52 minutes. Melanoma forms in the epidermis of the skin. At this stage, the cancer cells are not able to spread as they have no access to blood vessels. Researchers discovered that the cancer sends out tiny vesicles containing microRNA to the dermis layer. The vesicles induce changes in the dermis, including features of cancer-associated fibroblasts. The changes enable the dermis to absorb the cancer cells. The real threat of melanoma begins when the cancer cells have access to blood vessels and are spread to vital organs such as the brain, lungs, liver, and bones. The team also found two chemicals that could stop the spread of melanoma in its initial stages. One is capable of stopping the vesicles from being sent to the dermis and the other capable of preventing the reaction to the vesicles in the dermis itself. 
scientists find antibody that makes cancer cells kill each other. A team at the Scripps Research Institute has discovered a new therapy that could prove to be a safer way to battle cancer. Acute myeloid leukemia, AML, is caused by an overproduction of immature white blood cells that are unable to function properly or fight infection and interfere with normal blood cell production. Current cancer treatments stop the growth of cancer cells but almost always damage other healthy cells. Scientists found that applying certain antibodies to AML cells triggered them to mature into natural killer cells that support the immune system. These natural killer cells then destroy related AML cancer cells, but leave unrelated cancer cells alone, prompting researchers to call the technique fratricidin therapy. In a single day, natural killer cells in one sample destroyed 15% of their cancerous kin, suggesting that a safer, more effective form of treatment could be well on the way. The Scripps team is working to be able to test the new therapy on human patients next year. Limitless blood supply is not too far off. It's taken nearly two decades, but scientists may finally have the recipe to create stem cells, that wellspring of life and holy grail of regenerative medicine. A Boston research team programmed human pluripotent stem cells to become endothelial cells, which typically line the inside of blood vessels. These were injected with special proteins called transcription factors, then transplanted into mice. Weeks later, the cells had multiplied and in some cases formed a wide range of human blood cells in the mice's bodies. A second research team used blood cells from mice and injected them with a mix of transcription factors. The cells morphed into stem cells after incubating in petri dishes designed to mimic a human blood vessel environment. When injected into weak mice that had been treated with radiation, the stem cells regenerated both blood and immune cells. The mice recovered and went on to live full lifespans. The groundbreaking research from both teams provides hope for patients who suffer from blood cancers and other diseases. But tests need to be carried out to determine any negative effects before the procedure can go to human trials. This smart bandage will help you heal like Wolverine. Mad medical tech coming out of the U.S. this month could put a wrap on bandages as we know them. Researchers have designed a smart bandage they say heals skin tissue three times faster than a regular medical dressing. It accomplishes this via medication loaded inside the bandage threads. Drug delivery can then be controlled via smartphone. The researchers say in the future, this could accelerate healing of battlefield wounds. Sadly, it's still got to go through more testing before it makes it to market, and that could take years. Gene-edited immune cells clear babies incurable leukemia. A baby girl in Britain suffering from leukemia has become the first person in the world to receive an experimental gene-editing procedure that miraculously reversed her cancer. Layla Richards was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia when she was just 14 weeks old, a disease in which the bone marrow makes too many immature lymphocytes. This is the most common type of cancer in children. In a healthy child, the bone marrow makes blood stem cells that can become myeloid stem cells or lymphoid stem cells, which then develop into mature red blood cells, platelets, and white blood cells. However, in a child with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, too many stem cells develop into lymphoblasts, B lymphocytes, or T lymphocytes, which are in fact leukemia cells. Leukemia cells are not able to fight infection, and they take up the space for healthy blood cells in the blood and bone marrow. This may lead to infection, anemia, and easy bleeding. Doctors in London performed a new gene editing technology known as Talon on Layla, which had previously only been tested on mice. The technology uses molecular tools that act like scissors to cut specific genes in order to make T-cells from healthy donors behave in two specific ways. First, the cells are able to become invisible to a powerful leukemia drug that would normally kill them. Second, they are reprogrammed to target and fight against leukemia cells only. Layla spent several months in isolation due to her extremely weak immune system after the procedure. After the leukemia cells were confirmed to have been eliminated from Layla's body, she was given a bone marrow transplant to replace her entire blood and immune system. The treatment was prepared by scientists at London's Great Ormond Street Hospital, University College London and French biotech company Selectus. Selectus is going to fund full clinical trials of the therapy starting next year. Scientists are calling this a medical breakthrough. A drug typically used to treat arthritis and fever can cut the risk of heart attacks. 
According to U.S. government information, heart disease accounts for one in four American deaths each year. New research suggests that the anti-inflammatory drug canakinumab can reduce the risk of a repeat heart attack by 15%. The research tracked 10,000 heart attack patients in 40 countries who were treated with the drug every three months over a period of four years. Canakinumab was shown to be more effective than statin, another drug heart disease patients usually take to lower cholesterol. The researchers also found some in the study, most notably the elderly and diabetics, contracted potentially fatal infections and sepsis. Experts say the drug could save lives, but some are wary of the side effects. Molecule from tree found to be able to treat iron deficiency. Researchers have discovered that the molecule henokitiol restores iron transport in cells with missing or defective iron transporter proteins, dubbing it molecular prosthetics. In healthy cells, transport proteins move iron across the cell membrane, where it's needed to make hemoglobin that carries oxygen to the body. If the transporter is missing or defective, iron cannot cross through the cell membrane. The lack of iron reduces hemoglobin production and the body's red blood cell count. This decreases the body's oxygen levels and causes the heart to pump faster. A trio of henokidial molecules has been found to restore the transporter function. The polar ends bind to iron, while the nonpolar ends create a shield, allowing it to cross into the cell membrane. With cells now receiving iron, hemoglobin production and red blood cell count are both restored to normal levels. Henokidial has been tested on animals, where it's been shown to promote iron uptake in the guts of mice and prompt hemoglobin production in zebrafish. In future studies, researchers hope to develop similar drugs to treat transporter protein-related diseases, such as cystic fibrosis and lupus, 